Ah, mending video. Yeah. Anyway, alright, so this Lord and Savior guy again, Snake Pliskinus, blah blah blah, same crappy shirt. Actually, if it was polka dots, I'd like it. Right. Square's no good. Anyway, it's not even the, it's not even the, this stuff in there. It's the sleeves. Ugh. Short sleeve shirts are, um, like, I don't know, invented or made by, um, I don't know, homosexual dwarves? I don't know. Some kind of... Somebody who wants you to look stupid. So it's probably women. Probably women invented it. Because, yes, they're cut horribly. Anyway, it's irrelevant. Mostly. Um, so, this video, positive and negative energy. So he's conceding there's no such thing, but he's just so into this drug thing, right? So he's, he's talking about how great his attitude is. And then he... He's experimenting with drugs again. <laughs> you know, why? If you like the drug, you know it's going to be a problem. You know, if it does something positive, because you know then you're going to take it again. And then you know you have to deal with all the things negative it's doing. And you know that it's really hard to find some perfect drug. I mean, realistically, um, ain't going to happen. Because our psychology is so complex in terms of it takes decades of crap is in there. Uh, patterns and you start messing with decades of patterns uh, you know that's a lot of wiring and um, it's just not a good idea but he hasn't figured that out and he calls himself a rationalist or a reasonableist or a, you know somebody who's grounded huh. not really um, so anyway there's a lot of talk in here about moods and well actually the word mood was never used but you know motivational um, intensity, <laughs> you know, and how he thinks he's running this race the way a horse should. And, you know, my argument would be, no, the rational horse sees that there's no winning the race, okay? Because if you try really hard and you break your leg, then all you're going to get is flopping on the ground and the guy comes out and shoots you in the head. So you're not going to get anything for your trouble. And if you win the race and they put this big clump of heavy flowers around your neck and haul you around and you don't get anything special for your trouble. Um, so there's just no point in winning the race. Um, and so, yeah, the thing to do is just trot your way through it. Come in second or third. Uh, because then they'll, they'll keep investing in you. And, um, you yeah, know, go back to your stall and eat. This is no game to play here. So, but he thinks there's a game to play and a reason to be motivated be a little horse running in the race. Chase, chase, chase. Um, and some of that you have to do. You can't just, you just can't just eat potato chips, sleep, play video games. You know, most people can't because, you know, they have to make money or they have to do this. They have to do things to maintain their existence. So it's a little more complicated. But anyway, this whole, it's like he's selling this diluted perspective that, um, this is fun, <laughs> you know. It's fun for an idiot. Go adopt a blind cat and then go tell me how it's fun to watch. It's not fun. There's nothing about the world that's fun to look at or fun to watch, unless you're sadistic. So anyway, he gets onto nihilism and he has this silly definition of it. So that's why I made the video because I'm just saying, oh, that's just too fucking silly a definition. <sighs> so anyway, so. Somewhere in here it starts, and so we'll play this bit. This is an abysmal failure, and an hour and a half should be long enough for it to kick in. Uh, but if there's ever so, so he's complaining because his herbal co cocaine, <laughs> herbal cocaine, isn't doing anything for him. Yeah. Okay. An excuse to do a rambling video. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. On, you know, new weird drugs. So new weird drugs for. No good reason, right? Because he's supposed to be. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm pretty good. I'm. I'm taking this really nice. I'm running life pretty well. Let's see if I can fuck it up. I mean, he just got over the whole thing of ten years of Adderall and figuring out that. Oh yes, on balance, that probably wasn't a good idea. But I guess he doesn't really believe that because he's just looking for some. Maybe something else is better. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Still looking for a fix. Yet he's selling. Don't do drugs. 
Doesn't make much sense. Mm. Hypocritical. All that shit. Yeah, drinking coffee, interesting. It's going to get to it. You know, a lot of people call me a nihilist. Yes. That's because you have, have annihilated the idea of rational value uh, equations. You don't see them. You, you don't pay any attention to them. Like the whole idea of driving your car on bald tires or something. You don't really calculate the permutations of the value implications. And <laughs> that's nihilism. Like nobody's a nihilist in the sense that they don't eliminate all reality. It, the only thing that makes nihilism significant is the annihilation of the value component of reality. That's a nihilist. And, and you're definitely one of those. In a sense, that's sort of true. There you go. So you should just stop right there. But instead, he's going to go, but... In the sense that I have a rational and objective worldview. There we go. See, rational and objective. He thinks, he thinks being a nihilist means you don't understand that you know, gravity is going to make this pen fall. Yeah, of course. That's not nihilism. All right. Nobody thinks the pen's not going to fall except for a lunatic. The lunatic isn't a nihilist. He's a lunatic. So your definition is just all wrong. And in a rational and objective worldview, the here we go. Right now, this is good. This is the real big one. Let's see if we can get this answer right on the test. In an objective and rational worldview, here we go. Really, is not actually a point in doing anything. <clears throat> okay, not a point in doing anything. That means if, um, you know, you could, you could pull a thorn out of the lion's paw, you don't do it. There's just no rational reason. Or, <laughs> you know, if, if there's reason, oh, well, you should put new tires on your car because you might kill somebody on the highway. You shouldn't drink and drive. I mean, see, there's lots of reasons to do something. So, right there was stupid. What, what the real point is, is, is of a rational perspective is understanding that there's no reason to push this wheel any further in, in terms of its progress. The fact that it spins, you can't undo. The fact that right now it's spinning and there's a bunch of welfares at risk and lots of, lots of thorns to pull out of paws. Lots of them bazillions of little thorns to pull out of paws. So there's lots of things that are rational imperatives and the real problem is we can't see them in the sense that we can't feel the pain and therefore we just walk through our little dopey lives in our little checkered shirts pretending everything's okay. That's Nihilism is denying the existence of the negative reality of the thorn in the paw. Nihilism isn't like, I can't see it. Nihilism is saying, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't find a reason to think that's important. That's being a nihilist, which is really just another word for selfish, stupid, ignorant cunt. Rationality and objectivity doesn't motivate anybody to do anything. Okay, now that's just the dumbest thing somebody could say, right? So, rationally assessing the world and figuring out, like, like you know, just the simple things that are going to happen to you. You know, understanding that, well, I can't drink, you know, bug killer. <laughs> you know, there's lots of stuff we rationally understand is not good. People know they can't just sit at home and, I don't know, eat... Uh, butter sandwiches <laughs> you know butter in between two layers of butter they know they can't do that and live very long so I mean there's lots of things you can rationally figure out that are motivational just in the very nature in the sense that the rational addition equals fuck that's no good I mean you can even do it with the, the facts of your own life you know you're gonna die and you don't have any real control over that in the sense that even if you're prepared a proper death, a piano can fall on you or something. All kinds of things can happen to you that'll prevent you from getting to your fail-safe room, you know, your, your uh, safe place. <laughs> and so you're always at risk. And there's no way to 
you know, if that doesn't motivate you to recognize, oh, I have to look around, and then, you know, again, I would say the, the more important motivation is the one recognizing your role in the world. And, you know, this is a kind of a cliche, love them and leave them type guy, you know. <laughs> I don't think he takes any, doesn't worry too much about his interactions with other people. He just kind of molests the world. The world is there to be molested. You know, I want to rub its hiney and then I want to leave. After, you know, jizz, jizz, that kind of stuff. But yes, he's just doing a molestion. You know, he's just, he's just satisfying his needs out of the world and saying, there, I finished my job. No other rational imperatives but my gratification. That's a silly thing to sell. You know, it's just, this is how it is. Rationality and objectivity are very useful tools. You see, tools for what? Oh, tools for just gaining your gratification. They're not tools for understanding that your gratification can should not be at the expense of something else. Or that you're living in a world where your gratification is kind of made out of the exploitation of everything else, just about. Um, so you do your little meat eating and you do your little Chinaman abusing and you do all your little things in your life for your own comfort and you, you're saying that rationality and reasoning doesn't have anything to do with figuring out the implications and, and recognizing the dangers of everything you do. That everything you molest might go on to molest something else and that might molest something else or something like that. That you're part of a system and you're either making it a worse system or making it a better system. To do the things you're motivated to do. In hey, right, to do the things you are motivated to do. So again, it's, you're a nihilist because you don't recognize that what you're motivated to do, what you feel like, what you're hungry for, is the dumbest part of the instrumentality. And it has nothing to do with intelligence or recognizing real value. So doing what you want by feeling isn't going to tell you what the right thing to do is because that's the monkey. So don't, don't slander reasoning and logic by implying that they don't have access to knowledge of whether your base desires are shitty or socially, perhaps so, so socially motivated, uh, are, are more likely to produce um, a positive, uh, constructive impact on the world you live in. You might feel like shitting in the timeshare, okay, <laughs> and then leaving. Or you might feel like cleaning it up and then leaving. See, it was like when you were at a hotel, what did you do? Oh, you treated it like shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You decided this is my house and I'll do what I want. You didn't think about the other people living there or staying there. You just thought about Ray. What does Ray want to do? An effective manner. But the thing is, people who are nihilists, they're usually just so fucking depressed all the time, and you know? It makes no sense at all. I haven't met one nihilist who's depressed. How could you possibly be depressed if you're a nihilist? Go point me to a nihilist who's depressed, please. I mean, another insanely stupid thing. So I guess you really don't understand the word at all, do you? So he thinks anybody who is thinking about value and thinking about how we're not doing a good enough dance, like we're underperforming, you know, for the slop that is the world, for the 50 million people brutally killed in World War II, we're not exactly, you know, building a, a paper mache dog it's at all worth it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, it's got too many tails and it, the legs are sticking in the wrong direction. It's just doesn't even, it's not even close to good enough, you know, to kill 50 million people for, you know, not even close. So that kind of, those people, he's saying, oh, the people who recognize that, doing their reasoning, those are nihilists somehow. No, that's the exact opposite of a nihilist. Fuck. I, I mean, you're really, you're, you know, you're really kind of stupid. I'm just, I'm not. My point of view is cheerful realism. There we go. So, isn't that a charming mixture of stupidity, you know, oxymoronia all over the place? 
And the world needs more of that. La, da, 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 da. Don't worry, be happy. Um, <laughs> I mean, with cheerful realism. So it's realistic to be cheerful about, you know, a, a realistic assessment of the human condition, a realistic assessment of the animal condition, sentient feeling organisms on Earth, and to sit there and be cheerful about something. There's something to be cheerful about. No. I have a lot of positive energy. Right, you have energy. Okay, you claim it to be positive because it's selfish, self-indulgent energy. Uh, what does Ray want to do? Oh, I want to tr try a new drug. You know, but I don't want to go surfing. Now, I don't know. What do you do? Oh, I might be able to get to that. You know, I am really good at giving motivational speeches. No. <laughs> yeah, right, at pushing drugs. That's, you're just, I'm really good at pushing drugs. That's what his motivational speeches are. It's just a drug. Just a, a pacifier, you know. Um, and maybe that will be, even be addictive, where people just keep needing somebody to keep feeding them tripe, you know, and bullshitisms to live by. You know, God, give me, oh man, I'm addicted to cliches. Give me another cliche. Shoot me up. Shoot me up with another cliche. Another... Another pile of silver lining bullshit. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, you're a pusher. Because I repeat platitudes to people. Right. <laughs> you just admitted it. Fine. Great. You know, at least I thank you for that. It's just unfortunate the people you're talking to don't know what a platitude is, <laughs> so they don't get that you just admitted that you, you just, you just, you know, belch entire bullshit at them. You know, just to just to get people to shut the fuck up. But because I see their point of view, I recognize it, and then I speak to them. And then you mock it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, fine. It, you know, you, you play a, a little head game, you know, and get them to irrationally think the thing they actually did figure out that's correct. I'm a loser. Um, and then you try to convince them that, no, there's reason for you to go back on the track and see if you can break your fucking leg so you can get shot in the head. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Ray kind of likes watching that shit. In a way... I mean, it's kind of win-win, right? I mean, you know. Not only do you get a good badge for, you know, this silly notion that you somehow help somebody get back in the game, but you get the fun of watching them fail. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a fail video. Ah, oh, oh, yeah, I feed off that shit. It shows that I recognize what they're saying about the world, but I'm just cheerful about it. Right, I'm just lying about it. See, I'm just selling them this silly notion that, yeah, well, if you keep shooting this up, it'll be okay, really, trust me. Blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit, leprechaun, leprechaun, silver lining, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, platitude, platitude, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's, that's nothing to be, and he's almost like proud of it. Nothing to be proud of. I'm like, well, man, I wish I had an example. I should have prepared this. Cause I get yes, yes, that examples always help. The, you know, experimental evidence is, you know, kind of a good thing for doing that reasoning thing. Getting it right answers. You know, it's when you make up the evidence, it's a little dangerous. I give these motivational speeches all the time and they work. Like, <laughs> yeah, they work. Like, it's so funny. I, you know, I get that sucker to go back out there and eat the shit. No, you're not full. No, no, you can eat some more shit. It's okay. You know, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, be a man. Go out there and get that shit. Go eat some more shit. Yeah, be a be a poo eater like me. Well, I mean, yeah, sure, you're poor as shit. I mean, you're probably not gonna get laid. That's well, again, in getting laid, I know this is an important thing, but I'm just saying it really isn't a fix. It works. I mean, it just doesn't. Getting laid, all right, just once, <laughs> you know, it's not going to fix your problem. It really, you know, realistically, it just does. You don't, you know, oh, I got laid. That'll that'll last me five or six years. Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. So, I mean, even that whole attitude just shows a lack of appreciation for how sex is just another drug, all right? And, you know, 
you either you either you either got it in your own refrigerator and you know where you're okay or you're stuck dealing with the pushers and dealing with the the dealers and you know that's no good you know if you have to go deal for it because then you're going to get shit that's been cut you know the whoops <laughs> yeah tranny yeah oh no i'm cool with that but you know just a little surprised you know you're going to get the uh, you know if you, if you don't uh, if you don't if you, you know it's uh know thyself kind of a thing you know that's the best way to deal with getting laid is to know thyself really really intimately and and then you can get laid almost without you know any outside <laughs> intervention at all it's a head game getting laid it's all a head thing i mean this head given but and you know i'll go on and on Oh, well, you could have done that because that would have been maybe more interesting than this other tripe that you're doing. This routine. See, it's all a routine, too. This is, you know, Stink Pliskinus is just, he's kind of like, he would. I think he should have aspired to be an actor or something because I think he likes role-playing. So I was thinking about him in the Nut House, right? He went to the Nut House for a, a week at one time or two weeks, whatever it was, ten days. And I was just thinking, yeah, he just did that as a role-play. You know, he just thought of himself as being like Jack Nicholson or something. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the crazy thing. So I bet he had like a whole bunch of, of script ideas for, yeah, you know, crazy guy. And I'll just do the crazy thing and, you know, it'll be fun. You know. I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah. That's how it all looks to me. Just just looks like a guy who's he's like a contortionist. You know, he's got those double jointed uh, uh, joints, and his his personality is also contorted. You know, you can twist it and bend it any which way, and he'll mold to it. Yeah, you know. which is okay. I'm just saying that's not the average person. You know, the average person is isn't just a something you can. It's more rigid in terms of their identity and their 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 um you know the mechanisms of their psychology what rewards them and what doesn't what what they can live with and what they can't comfortably cheerfully and just with the sheer power of my dominance i will reach into their brain and cheer them up <clears throat> See, whatever that means. So, yes, right, you'll just platitude them, you know, just drown them in platitude, you know, until they come up gasping for any kind of air. <laughs> Platitudes don't work, because... It, oh, you just said they did. Oh, gee. It makes a person feel like, ah, oh, this person doesn't even understand me, they're not listening to me. If you show that... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you show that you're listening and then you platitude. I mean, what's the difference? Oh, okay, so that's just the way you do it. So you give them a little hug first, and, and then you sell them the cocaine. Okay. You understand somebody, and that you feel the same way, but that you are positive about it, and you're just fucking cheerful about it, it'll really cheer a person up. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I wish you had some case studies of the train wrecks you've reclamated into model citizens. <laughs> you know... Just, just, uh, you know, with no ball tires and shit. No drunk driving, no bullshit. Just a real good, solid citizen. Doing his best. Yeah, I'd like to see one of those. The, the reclamated. You know, maybe, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should be a motivational speaker. My... Oh, yeah, so he doesn't even, he doesn't even, through rational process, recognize that all the motivational speakers in the world are just stealing people's money. <laughs> that they're all on just an ego trip and talking absolute rubbish. Every single one of them. I mean, there really isn't. Well, maybe one of those Indian guys is a little bit sincere, but I, I still have my doubts. They seem pretty... Look, I'm s sitting funny on my little podium talking down to you. <laughs> you know, they still seem like they're... they're getting off on, um, you know, the whole trip of, uh, look at, they're eating my words, they're just eating them, you know, so, um, but I mean, all, you know, th those, are, there's some that are, aren't, aren't as bad as others, certainly, 
but I'm just saying that most of them are just fucking, you know, they're, they're uh, carnival barkers. I mean, they're, they're just looking for a way to pick your pocket. I mean, that's all they're in it for, is the pocket picking. Cheerful realism. You know, because I'm like, yeah, I mean, we're going to die. Chill for realism. Yeah, yeah, we're going to die. And in the process of doing it, we're going to harm and torture and squash and step on and smush and maim and you know, all kinds of negative things, a whole bunch of shit for the cause of dying in the end. Oh, brilliant plan. It's like having the horse break its leg in the race. And then it, you know, it falls on the jockey, you know, and the jockey falls on the little Pomeranian dog he was, you know, had in his pocket. And it's just, the thing is just, the tragedy goes so much deeper, but you don't see that. And, okay, your life isn't going to matter in any sort of grand cosmic sense, okay, given, but the pressure's off. Uh, but the pressure's off. So, so I mean, so the thing about dying is just that you didn't mean anything in the cosmic sense. It's not that you, the typical death doesn't look like a very good time. It looks like, the, you know, Freddy's nightmare for realsies. You, you know, why, oh yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be in that movie for real. So, you know, that just glib. I mean, just that's nihilism. See, when you take the word death and you take the dying part out of it and just pretend there's nothing to fear, <laughs> you know, but the, the horrible pain and vomiting, I mean, what the fuck are you talking about, Ray? Come on. And hey, you know, you can just enjoy life to whatever extent you like, and if you fail, it's no big deal, because... Okay, so, again, so if you fail, it's no big deal. So, you know, if you go drink and drive and you kill a bunch of people, or no, you put them in wheelchairs, you know, where they're not even, you know, they're just in misery, just ruling in wheelchairs. No big deal! What the fuck? So what? You burn some skin off here or there and all that crap? Fuck that. So, I mean, that's the glib part. It's just so glib. Nihilism. Nihilist glib. You don't matter. You know, like people who are self-conscious. I'm like, you know... So, people who are self-conscious. Another brilliant two words shoved together. Oh, you mean introspective, maybe? You're, you're really worried about what people think of you, but consider this. Ah, so I mean self-conscious in the sense of people who are, um, have some sort of psychological mechanisms that say, uh, you know, I don't want to be in a fail video. Um, so they're sort of alpha in a sense, in the sense that they, they see reputation as meaning something. I mean, peacock with its feathers kind of thing. And they don't want to be degraded you know, because there's a natural mechanism that says you're a loser. And so he's saying, well, no, no, don't bother being the alpha. See, the real strategy is be the beta, <laughs> okay, that kind of knows it doesn't matter if you're alpha as long as you can still rape chicks. Now, that's usually the way it works. Hmm, that doesn't sound very good. Yeah, so never mind. Nobody really cares about you. I know that sounds harsh, but look at the positive. Nobody cares, you know? Ten minutes after you're gone, nobody's thinking about you. Nobody's thinking good or bad things about you. Well, ten minutes, I'd say. Now, there's somebody. Somebody's got to clean me up, and they're probably saying, Oh, God. I pooed his pants before he died. Ooh, stinky, stinky. So there's probably somebody thinking about you. Probably not very positive things, because, you know, when you're dead, you're probably not very entertaining. You know, you're probably not very charming when you're dead, so you probably didn't charm anybody. Um, so it does take a little longer than ten, 10 minutes for you to disappear, but yes, you do disappear fairly rapidly. You're totally irrelevant to them. They're too busy caring what other people think about them. Don't emulate their mistake. Right. So this, this idea that we should care about our reputation, I'm saying yes, it's, it is all psychology. 
most of it's negative psychology all right this whole idea of, of uh, feeling the pressure um, but I'd say some of it is so fucking necessary because it's really the only thing that does make guilt work and make um, you know in things like being accused of being a liar or not having integrity these things are important and if you don't feel them natively it's a lot harder to make the knowledge of them alone control behavior as you're a, 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 you're, you're kind of like the the definition of that right so you don't feel the innate pressure and even though you know okay Chinamen are getting exploited people are dying of horrible diseases horrible things are happening in the world it just can't get to you you know you just you know it but you can't and even if your brain actually said you should do something about that rabies you are a powerful man now even if you thought that the impulse to say no I want some candy that's stronger you know I want some drug candy <laughs> you know <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, geez. Fail, Ray, really, fail. Ah, oh, I mean, this incessant drinking. I mean, cause, you know, it's one of these little imperfections you might want to work on. Hmm. You know, actually, I, I, I was having just a little bit of pain in my shoulder. Now that's gone. You know, so maybe that's an effect of kratom, but... Oh. Uh, it's probably the, just the moving of the coffee cup or something. Kratom. It's a real great name for a fun drug, is kratom. Right? That just sounds like a great, good, good time. Take some kratom. I mean, fuck. Kratom. I mean, the guy on, had to be on drugs who named it, right? I mean, fuck. The, and the idiots who didn't rename it. I mean, you, you can rename party drugs almost anything, like ecstasy or something. You idiots can't figure out. Well, we probably should call it if something better than Kratom. I don't know. Ibuprofen would do the same thing. That's cheaper. <sighs> Positive energy. All right. Well, this is going nowhere. Drink, drink, blah, blah. But what I'm saying about Next how subjects. I sometimes give motivational speeches and it really cheers people up. That's a thing about having a positive attitude. Okay, and it really cheers people up. So that's by his testimony. <laughs> you know. uh, so, yes, he goes up to the train wreck victims. Ah, it's okay, look, hey, you know, you admit it. Your wife was a nag, you know, so your life is better. It's going to be okay. Lots of fun stuff you can do now. You can walk around the house in your underwear and shit. It's infectious, like herpes. So, another concession, but don't be afraid of herpes. <laughs> no, it's no big deal. It's only for life. What's that? It's not a big deal. No problem. No problem. You gotta know he's got herpes. I mean, people online, they always talk about have empathy for this person, empathy for that person. Blah, 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 blah. Well, empathy. Oh, shit, blah, 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 blah. And again, empathy is a silly word. I, I mean, you know, it's really not about having something called empathy. It's just about doing the logical math of being able to figure out that, hey, my brain is this, doing this, and all the other brains are likewise have a value interest. They're either going to have a good day or a bad day. And I can't for any rational reason. Now, even though I feel like my day is more important than theirs, I can't for any rational reason, I can't give a list of evidence why me feeling good is more important than them feeling good. So once you know that basic fact, you know that your brain really should be working for any satisfaction, not just the satisfaction of this brain. And that's just a, as a premise fact, you know, it is, uh, it's a game changer if you take it seriously. I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to make you unselfish, but it's going to make it really hard for you to do it in this glib, silly, you know, self-indulgent, mushy way. Because if you say what you're saying, 
maybe you can say that shit to one of the idiots, okay? The, the retards that you're deluding into chasing the balloon some more. But it ain't gonna work on somebody who actually recognizes that truth. These are two way street, right? You can have empathy for people who are suffering and are miserable around you, and you can let it make you miserable. But <laughs> that's not the point. See, that's why empathy is not the point. The point is is to actually recognize its existence, and. I don't think it's really. I don't think you can recognize its existence without it taking the edge off the game, you know, taking the edge off playing. When you realize, oh, some of the other players are going to get, you know, brain damage, or they're going to, you know, get a, you know, real, real bad is happening. So I can't be a pusher for the game, you know, if I am acknowledging the price being paid for the stupid game. I mean, it's just adding it up. I, I don't, you don't have to have empathy for the people who died in World War II. All you have to do is acknowledge that 50 million lives were brutally ended, you know, with much pain and suffering involved in their destruction, plus all the associated consequences of those 50 million people being eradicated and what it means to all the people that were dependent on those 50 million people in one way or another. And so the the bucket of horror is so huge. And look, I, I don't have to sit here and oh, start crying over it, but just acknowledging it is depressing. I mean, it does make, you know, platitudes and silver lining mush, you know, does kind of make you want to punch that in the face. You know, fuck you. I mean, why don't you just insult the dead? I mean, you know, it's just kind of disgusting. Your, your glib frosting on the torture cake is just totally inappropriate. If you have the power of personality, you can force it the other way. And you can make the people who are miserable and suffering around you just fucking happy with their life, even though the factual details of... Oh, okay. Well, just, you know, you really do need to do some experiments, because I want to see how enduring your little drug pushing is. <laughs> you know, how far, how far these people got before they dropped dead, <laughs> you know, taking your drug. How, how, how they actually uh, converted it into anything... Um, but a way of getting themselves into traffic and run over. Their life hasn't changed. There's a, there's a great benefit to this positive energy that isn't actually energy. If your emotional and motivational states are in a certain way, it is communicated to others by an empathetic expression. Yes, okay, whatever. Yes, people can probably tell I have a, sh a shitty attitude. <laughs> yes. But again, it's really not the subject. I mean, we're supposed to be talking to people who can think one step ahead of these superficial things. Just like I can get over your stupid fucking shirt. There's certain things people are expected to get over in terms of, uh, he sounds depressing. I mean, that really shouldn't be the standard view or no view. No, um, the standard should be, He's talking sense, or he's talking rubbish, or some kind of thing like that. But you really, you should have the expectation that people capable of absorbing this information would be capable of understanding that you can't judge the book by its depressing cover kind of thing. But anyway, this is probably enough of it. It's probably enough. All right, we'll do one more minute. And I have high levels of empathetic expression. Now I'm all self-conscious about it. Like the oh, yes, right. You're fake it very well. Yes, you're a good actor. I pretend to give a shit about their lives and <laughs> their pain. I pretend to feel their pain. Yes, we've seen a lot of that in the world. I move my hands when I talk. You can always tell a person sincere. I'm so self-conscious about it now. Yes, because your fingers are all crookedy. See, mine are nice and straight fingers. Straight. The knuckles go in one fucking direction. By, if they move their hands when they talk. If somebody's just talking and talking and they don't move their hands, 
Well, I mean, they're just not quite as sincere. <laughs> well, this... Uh, you have lots of stupid theories, but that's got to be the dumbest one I've ever heard. I mean, of all your dumb theories, I mean, I don't know where you got that one from. Oof. Oof. <laughs> well, that's enough. We'll end on a really dumb theory. That's a really dumb theory. I, I mean, really, I mean, you... <laughs> It's, it's, I think the opposite must be true. It's all these hysterical, you know, people and they're, oh my God, oh my God, the it's the diamond ring eclipsey thing. And, you know, and they're all, you know, that's sincerity. No. That's just the silliest cartoon kind of, they're all living on, on hype, 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 hype. They've all hyped it. They all, it's like, it's like Emperor's new cupcake. <laughs> you know, it's a fake, oh, the golden cupcake. You know, and they're all, their little legs are going back and forth and they're all horny for it. No, no, it's not sincere. It's, it's, well, it's sincerely retarded if it's any kind of sincerity. So again, why would, why would you want to appear sincere? if you have the mannerisms of a fucking retard. Yeah, that kind of thing. Anyway, I mean, sincerely stupid is no, that's not a win. Okay, I don't know if, Yeah, he depresses me. Ray, Ray, yes, you depress me. Yeah, <laughs> because, uh, God, I hate bullshit. And you're so full of shit. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, till next time.